These are Intel's new CPUs. AMD sucks at making laptops, but not at giving you AI in your FSR4. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, September 16th. 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about the freshly unveiled details coming out about Intel's Arrow Lake CPUs. These are coming out from a Benchlight forum, which is indicating that despite the fact that we're just over a month away from the October 24th launch of the CPUs, that the lineup is roughly set in terms of what core count and spec sheet and clock speed we can expect from these upcoming Core Ultra 200 series CPUs. The flagship's expected to be the Core Ultra 9285K. 8P cores, 16 E cores, up to 5.7 gigahertz clock speed, 250 watt maximum turbo power with 125 watt base power. Then you also have the Ultra 7, which has four fewer E cores, also only goes up to 5.5 gigahertz, and the Ultra 7 265KF, which doesn't have integrated GPU, and then the Ultra 5 245K, which has 6P cores, 8 E cores, goes up to 5.2 gigahertz, and will only have a maximum turbo power of 159 watts. So we've seen benchmark benchmarks come in from leaked benchmarks out there and it does seem like this will be faster than the 14th gen situation in terms of multi-core and single core. It's just a matter of how much. It does look to be fairly competitive with Ryzen 9000 as well. It's just, again, not clear where the pricing is going to land and exactly how much power are you actually consuming. Is Ryzen 9000 way more efficient? All of those details remain to be seen from third-party reviews. But again, we're going to be waiting just about a month to find all of that out. But in case you're looking to upgrade your CPU, you should check out today's video sponsor. You can trade in an old phone for a new one, so why can't you do that with PC parts? Thanks to today's sponsor, Jawa, you can. Jawa has had a GPU trading program for a while now, and lucky for you, they're expanding it to include CPUs as well. Accepting most AIM4 and LGA 1200 CPUs, funding your upgrade is super easy. You can get an instant quote through the quick quote system instead of writing your CPU's life story, so you can move on to picking out your new CPU. And once you have your quote and your upgrade picked out, you can offset the cost of a new CPU from Jawa. Save even more on Jawa's already super affordable prices. If you rather just take the money and run, Jawa lets you cash out your trade-ins via PayPal for quick, easy, and secure transactions. Jawa's worked hard to make sure this is a streamlined and simple process so you can upgrade without delays or have cash in your pocket fast. Get more cores in your system with Jawa's CPU trading program today. You can use the link in the description and code UFD10 to get $10 off a new CPU from Jawa. Thank you to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. In case you want to cool one of those CPUs, the Noctua NHD 15 G2 came out recently, but it had a rattle. The metal on one of the heatsink fins started to vibrate against the tower and it caused it to have rattlegate issues as it was known. Noctua said that they were going to be fixing this and now they're reporting that they indeed have come up with a solution. All models of the G2 that will be shipping from now will have the rattle fixed, but then in case you've already purchased a G2 yourself, you can request a free stainless steel cover from Noctua and you'll be allowed to put that on your PC and it should potentially stop the rattle. Noctua is saying that you can have three different options in how you want to resolve this. You can get the free panel, you can replace it with a brand new G2 or you could just get a full refund in case you want to do that. And what AMD should maybe want to do is uh, talk to their laptop partners because of reports coming out indicating that they are kind of like Intel was back in the day, which is not nice to work with. This report coming out indicating that AMD is really shifting their focus to AI and data centers and making it so that the laptop manufacturers who have their Strix Point CPUs just simply don't want to put these chips out despite how powerful they actually are. The report indicates that AMD is full of miscommunication, unfulfilled promises, and generally poor treatment, and that it's reminiscent of Intel's behavior during its dominant years. And that AMD has probably left billions of US dollars lying around with its many partners over the years, specifically with how poorly it treats them. And you can see this reflected in the actual number of models that launched. When it came to Strix Point, which recently came out, we've reviewed them ourselves. There was only three companies that released Strix Point's laptops. HP and MSI only had one option each, and then Asus had 13, which allowed it to seem like it was impressive. But when you compare that with Qualcomm, they had 12 different models across 
across seven different brands. And then Intel's upcoming Lunar Lake is supposed to have 80 different laptop designs that are hitting the market just later next week. So this doesn't appear to be a good thing from AMD. This is something that I personally have noticed in the market that they always seem to be lacking on their promises. They'll talk big about what they're coming out with at CES, and then they take an extra quarter to come out with these CPUs and chip designs to the actual laptop market nearly every single time. And it's been frustrating. I've noticed it. And this report kind of seeming to indicate one of the reasons why it's happening behind the scenes. And what's happening with Reese? He didn't give us deals like half the week last week. What the heck, man? You got deals for us today? Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Nothing is different. You're matching it all. These are the deals you're looking for. And first up, we have the Amazon Fire HD 8-inch tablet, specifically the 64 gig variant from 2022, going for only $59.99, making it $70 off and a great little Netflix and bed machine. Mm, yummy, yummy, deal monster. Oh no, <laughs> oh no. What did you say? <laughs> In my house! It's <laughs> happening again. But then next up, we have this Oreco Gen 4 NVMe M.2 SSD. The two terabyte version is going for $114.99 with the coupon applied, making it $15 off. Yummy. Oh. And then lastly, today we have this Acer Nitro 27 inch 1440p 300 hertz gaming monitor, going for only $249.99, making it $100 off. Yummy, yummy, deal master. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, thanks or thanks not, Reese. If you got deals done, I've got no clue. It turns out that AMD has some clue about what they're gonna be bringing out for FSR4, the next gen upscaling technology. This is coming after a series of interviews that an AMD exec did with Tom's Hardware, and this is the latest details that we're getting out of that interview. Initially, we found out that AMD is not looking to go for flagship GPUs for the foreseeable future, instead trying to optimize for market share. The second round of interviews indicated that they're gonna be merging their RDNA and cDNA architecture to come up with the uDNA architecture to make it more unified. And now FSR4 will have, guess what? AI, it's gonna be AI based. It's gonna have artificial intelligence, specifically because the exec at AMD says that he wants to play Wukong on his ROG ally for three hours, not for 60 minutes. And that AI upscaling and AI interpolation will be the way to go about it to get it done. And that the idea is to increase efficiency to maximize battery life and then when you partner this comment with the fact that it looks like they're not necessarily chasing high-end desktop GPUs it does make sense that they're going to go with the more efficient method but bringing in AI based upscaling and AI based frame generation they're doing the thing that Nvidia has been doing with deep learning super sampling so it remains to be seen if this is going to need specific cores to be properly accelerated or if uh, their next generation GPUs are going to have NPUs baked in like you can find on their mobile side with the uh, XDNA2 that has what's well, 45 or 50 tops of NPU performance. Are they bringing that to something like the 8700 XT? We already saw a company, I think it was, it was Power Color who showed off at Computex, they put an NPU on their RX 7000 series GPU. This, this could be the way that they're doing it moving forward where they're gonna have specific AI hardware to make that happen and uh you just get ready for it it doesn't look like they're gonna give you much faster but just more efficient that's the plan for the future but let's stop talking about the future and let's talk about the past see what you had to say in friday's episode of hot comments response to hot news kryptonite on flow point says why did a single player game ever have or need anti-cheat am i missing something so this is in regards to jedi survivor having drm removed or de novo drm removed and that's de novo is uh well i think it can it does have anti anti-cheat properties. It's not an anti-cheat uh, software. It's a digital rights management software. So it's meant to make it so that you can't as easily crack the game so that pirates can then have it distributed variously across torrents. And instead, the companies that make the games can actually make money from it. So that's uh, De Nuvo is not for anti-cheat specifically. It's actually more for making sure the games aren't cracked and making it so that uh, companies get their money out of the game. And removing De Nuvo a year after the game has come out makes a lot 
lot of sense in terms of the financial incentive of what these companies have because most of their sales at, are happening at the highest value of the game. So when the game's costing $60, $70, they're making their money off of that. And then when it goes on sale, they're making less money off of each subsequent sale. So there's less incentive for Denuvo to be in there. And then over on YouTube, we got Chris Wheatley saying, the biggest thing I liked about Threadripper was the name itself. AMD Marketing really had a winner there. I agree, Threadripper was such a banger name. And I think at one of the Computexes, we got like Threadripper shirts that said something like heavy metal Threadripper. It was it was amazing at the AMD keynote. I, it, was, it was fun. I mean, it's still around. Threadripper's a great name, but it's just not high-end desktop for normies anymore. And then the White Knight saying, the hearing aid for partial deafness is a huge W for Apple. Really cool to see accessibility features like this. Can help older people, people in construction, and so many more with damage to their ears. Yes. I, I, I think it is that I see this as a good thing. And then Zwerko saying, I'm still on my Threadripper 2950X. Still works great for my needs. I was thinking of moving to regular Ryzen to upgrade my setup, though I'd miss the PCI Express abundance. But with the latest lackluster release of the 9950X, I decided I could wait to see what Zen 6 might bring, or who knows, maybe Intel improves their HEDT offerings. One thing I'm sure is I'm not paying $3,000 just for the CPU motherboard and memory, which is now standard for Threadripper setups. No, sir. 2K I could live with, but anything above that is daylight robbery. And that techie said, Saying massive props to CDPR for still updating Cyberpunk. Love seeing developers continually go beyond expectations for the sake of gamers, which uh, if you read the response to the FSR 3 update, not everybody's happy with CD Projekt Red, but I think uh, most people can acknowledge that they've done more with that game than anybody thought, especially when it launched. And then Z Shrink said, I love the mild amount of trolling that goes on between changing dialectical phrases. Keep it coming. You got it. I, I will do that. Z and Z. And then Joey Wheels says, so no deals from Reese today for some super secret special reason? As in the words of Dr. Evil, right. I don't get it. I don't get it either. I don't know who Dr. Evil is. Why would we say that? No idea. I don't know what that means. We'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.